What up? Ugh. Happy birthday, RE4. How's it going, y'all? Um, yeah, set this up to where uh, we can hear the song still, I guess, for funsies. So, let's see if I can't do this real quick, like... <laughs> JC with that sub? <laughs> That's funny. Do I know the way? I might know the way. <laughs> oh man. Alright. So I gotta make the music kinda lower. I think it'll get like flagged or something stupid, so I don't know like how low that is really for you guys, but uh you know, whatever. So anyways, um I've got like a little list thing going on here. So uh you know, we'll kind of just go over this stuff for funsies today. No runs today. Don't feel like it, so <laughs> I do remember that. Thanks, Jud. <laughs> Big R. <laughs> wow. Finding all the original locations would be kind of cool. I think the people in the Ultimate HD uh, mod actually did that stuff. Like, they went around and found all the original textures and stuff to use, so... So that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, uh, anyways. So... I'm just gonna talk about, like... Plans for the game, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna run. RE4 Central stuff. The auto splitter because there's still people that don't know how to use it. Uh, just talk about all the different consoles, and then uh, just talk about like runners who influence stuff. Uh, this has been a list that I've had on a pace bin of things I'd like to try to do during this month. Um, I've already started on this one, but I've only played for one day for about an hour, and that was about it. Um, just haven't had any motivation to play this game. Which, uh, and then, you know, I started on this as well. But basically brings me to my next point is that I'll be retiring from this game soon. Um, like for good, competitively. I don't know if it'll be this year or if it'll be after RE4 month of next year, but it's one of the two. Because I've just, like, lost all, like... I don't know, enthusiasm for this game. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> but, uh, anywho. So, I don't know what's on my glasses, but it's, like, not coming off. It's pretty cool. It's got, like, smudges. Pretty sweet. So, anyway, Let's talk about plans first, I guess. So, obviously, this stuff right here. Um, this is the first one to go down. Um, it's going to be 440 or 439, depending on how it goes, like how it turns out, like I, whenever I start playing, because right now it's a 442, the time's not good. Uh, so I know for sure 440 is going to be a thing. 439 should also be a thing, but uh, I think like my best, my sum of best is like 438 or 437 or something like that. But either way, I don't want to grind it for too long. Um, then I'm going to move on to AA for 360. I already have a 5 flat and it was two frames away from getting a 459 and I had some mistakes in the run. So obviously 459 is like easily possible. Um, I want to do AA on GameCube disc. Um, this would be for uh, PAL, and uh, you know that's that's for sure gonna be a thing. 
And then the blindfold run's been pretty fun. It's been hard. But, um... It's, uh... <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do Chapter 5. Uh, I've been trying to think of how we're gonna do the it cages. I really don't know. Uh, because... Once he hits the button and we have, like, 30 seconds to get out, it's gonna be hard to tell him which way to go, especially if it's gonna keep grabbing him. Because he's not gonna be able to see the QTEs coming up. Um, so he's gonna be just blind hitting QTEs, which are gonna be happening a lot. And then I don't know if we're doing any races, uh, but those would be just, like, for fun for me. Like, not streamed, whatever. Just racing. So anyways, uh, after RE4 month, though, the overall plan that I've always had when it came to running this game, when I first started running, was become the best New Game Plus GC player. That was, like, my number one goal. It's what I want to always, you know, what I wanted. Um, I've never had the record. For GC. Um, so I want to basically just beat Derek. That's like been my main goal forever. But I just I started playing all the other versions and I haven't played uh, GC competitively since 2014. <laughs> so <laughs> It's been a long time since I've actually done real runs on that. So when I come back, I'll be way better. And I'll be able to really take the record pretty easily, I would think, from Derek. With or without Minecart, doesn't matter. Um, I want to take it for both uh, PAL and NTSC. Um, this was the first one I started with ever. So that's, uh, that's why I'm leaving it for last on this part. Um, but my goal is to not kill these. Uh, they are the disc version. And that's just because the disc version um, has inconsistent loads. And uh, every console, like GameCube or Wii, um, just it's, it's all different. I don't have a waifu. Um, I'll tell you, it's not Ashley. Um, once I get done with this, like, I literally just want to beat Derek and that's it. And then I'm done. Like, I don't care at that point. But then my main goal is to move to GCSB to do both PAL and NTSC. Um, and those I want to put all my effort into to kill them. Um, those are the ones I want to be known for. Like, that's that's what I want to be known as, like, the guy who plays GCUSB and is, like, the best at it. That's what I want. So, literally, I'm just going to finish off AA stuff, move to GameCube Disk, and then do GameCube USB. Um... Just doing New Game Plus. Um, I had thought about maybe trying my hand at New Game Pro for both GameCube Disc and Steam 60. And then I came to my senses. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I'd rather, you know, play a category that's based on skill and not luck. Uh, where you can just, you know, die out of nowhere. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then several ways it's just like, eh, and obviously it's not on GameCube, so... So yeah, so I'm going to do all this, and depending on how long this part takes, uh, will depend on how long my career stays alive. Once this is done, I'm out. Like, peace. Done. Um, I'll also do AA for GameCube USB, but that'll be, you know, in between. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, depending on that, then I'm never going to look back, never going to play this game again. I've already decided so I'm not playing... Um, any other console ever <laughs> after after AA is done basically so um 
Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... I... have the record for every console for New Game Plus pre-Minecart except for, like, what, PS2? GC? Because I don't have NTSC or PAL. I've never had the GameCube record for any console. Let's get that straight right now. Derek's had both the entire time, ever since I started running. It was just secretive. Um, I don't know what else. I can't think. So I may have I may have all the others pre minecart. The <laughs> the minecart um, basically killed it killed all my motivation. Like every bit of it. It it was the best and worst skip <laughs> to ever happen. Sorry for. It um it just yeah, PS4. PS4 I never played. That's the only console I never played. I always forget about PS4 and Xbox One because they're so bad. Sorry. Um, oh, and pre minecart I guess I don't have X1 either. So, but those two are just garbage. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Never had GC, but my plan is to take it. I want to be the GC guy for sure, but yeah, minecart. Um, you know, I was I was in the process of literally killing every other New Game Plus record, um, and basically had the rug just pulled out from beneath my feet. Like you know, I'm this close to literally having really good times. Nothing, nothing super killed, but like super solid, like. 90 percentile type runs for every single console I had played and then literally just having it swept away and I was it just killed everything for me I was like yeah I'm done dude I can't do it again like I can't spend all this time on this game I've spent too much in it uh, all of my just willpower is just gone so it's over Um, but yeah so now let's go talk about RE4 Central, so, um, specifically the website, um, 2019 is when the website, um, comes up for renewal for the server and stuff, and it's like 250 bucks, and I believe that'll be in the fall, like autumn of 2019, so, uh, when that comes around, RE4 Central may or may not be around anymore. Depending on how I feel. Because um, at that point, I'll be so removed from the game. I'll already be retired, most likely. Um, so... And I just... You know, it's not really appreciated. This game was more or less... You know, it was more or less for us in the first place. It was for me and JC and Wipe. And Lewis, like we put all our, you know, like white mainly, put all the effort into it. And it was for us because we just hated the way speedrun.com was being ran and how it's just a cluster. So it was for us. So we had it. We'll have it for the, you know, these three years or whatever it is. And then we can just be done with it, you know, call it good. And then you guys can just go back to living your lives without it. So yeah, um, while we have it though. You might as well take advantage of it and use the resources it's got. And that's what I'm here to talk about now. So, um, you can see this game has a lot of runners, and one of the biggest problems is that it has too many versions. So, even though we have one of the bigger communities when it comes to speedrunning, um, it doesn't really reflect it because everyone's so spread out and there's no competition. That's one of the other reasons I'm quitting this game is because there's no competition. Um, there's nothing to strive for. So when you come in, like, speedrun.com, and you go to games, and you filter this to be by um, player count, um, 
kill you. I don't remember if you're supposed to hit something. I thought I was supposed to do it automatically. There it goes. So we need to change it to where it's up. I guess it just takes a while. It's pretty cool. But anyways, when you go to it, um, it shows that RE4 is one of the biggest games um, on the site. But the problem is it um, it just is so spread out that there's no point. You know, it's just like it says it has 234 players. But when you really look at it, we have 683 different runners, but that's including mercenaries. And, you know, we have a lot of runs that this site doesn't have. So, you know, if we were all on GameCube... Even if it was still separated by regions, if it was still in TSC, PAL, and J, you know, three different versions, technically, be a whole lot better. And the reason, like, one of the big reasons, you know, that I've quit playing the game in the last, like, you know, two years is just because there's no competition for me, specifically. And I'm not saying that anyone's bad, I'm saying that, like, I can't push myself the way I want to be pushed. So when you go to sites like Halo Runs and you have, like, you know... Right now we're learning how to do Halo 3. It's one game. So you have, you know, all these people to compete against. These are all, like, Halo 3 people right now. You know? Like, you have all these people to compete against. <laughs> it just makes it so much more desirable to have a good time in, I guess, or something. Like, you know, like, you just feel more accomplished. So, I don't know. Um, I just wish it would have stayed, you know, to <laughs> what it was supposed to be. <laughs> but, whatever. If it was like that, this game would be a lot better. But unfortunately, it's not, and now we have all this mess right here. So, um, you can see here, we've got the server cost. This is the 2019 things, the 250 I was talking about. Um, I really don't want to pay that out of pocket. And if I end up choosing not to, I'll give the money back to the people. Um, anywho, we have a facts list. Simple little frequently asked questions, you know. Um, what's the dimming glitch? Out of bounds. Like, what's all these acronyms? What do these mean? What is save and quit? Is RTA used for saving quit? Blah blah blah. You know, just like random things. You know, so if you ever want to like look at that, that's cool. Great. The resources though, this is the part I really wanted to talk about. So we have the auto splitter. And um <laughs> Killer Seven, yeah. You're right, dude. Um so anyways, this tells you all about the auto splitter and how it works and what it does. And there's a lot of people that still don't know how to use it and still don't know that there's a load remover. And, you know, this took us months to make. And this thing's been done since May. Like, this has been up and running since May and still people don't know how to use it. And I don't I don't get it. So, um, <laughs> so this load remover is what I really want to talk about. Um... And I'm going to show you guys, like, how you can use it. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show everything and why it should be the the meta. It's like everyone should use it. Everyone should switch to it for Steam. This is mainly for Steam. You know, it's nothing. It's just for the PC. I don't understand why people don't use it, but that's just them. It's whatever. So if you come down here, there's a click to go to download page. And this actually has layout files specifically made for each category it's like already preloaded for you so i'm gonna go ahead and download all of them and i'm just gonna act like i'm setting them up for the first time so we've got these three right here and we'll put them on the desktop and i'll uh i'll show you guys what we're cooking with here all right so we have these three right here, I'm going to go ahead and extract each of them. And these are just the layouts, like I said. Um, so once we get this, then I'll show you how to grab all the other stuff. 
So we'll start with the main game first. So I'm going to open it and I'm going to close splits first and then open it up. So you get something like this. <laughs> and uh, what you got to do is go in and make your own splits. Um, and we tell you inside of the auto splitter how to like how many splits you're going to need to set it up and everything. Like we tell you everything you need to know. So if you go into edit splits and you're like, all right, what are we playing? Right. We're playing resident evil four. So this thing usually takes a bit to load, but you go to resident evil four, right? And it, it says right here, auto splitting, load removal available by r four central. Cool. Great. Right. It's already activated. You just got to hit activate and then you can actually go inside of it if you know where it's located. Um, you can go where it's located, which is in your components inside of Live Split, and you can open it and see what it looks like. And I can show you that real quick. So if I open it, and I'll show you how much craziness is inside of it. It's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> But uh, it's called the R4 Central Steam Timer 2. Here's what it looks like. So anyone can open this if you download it, if you activate the splits. You can find this in your live split components folder, and you can open it. So it says created by us. Um, tells you, you know, 19 splits for the main game, 5 splits for separate ways, 6 splits for Sima Ada. Um, you know, whatever. So it like has a, this is how much work went into this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's got 450 lines of code. Got a lot of stuff. So anyhow, just so you'd have fun with seeing that. So anyways, you can activate it. We need to make, you know, um, have, you know, the 19 splits or whatever, like great, cool. Um, but then this is the important part that a lot of people don't know you can do. You go in and you hit settings. <laughs> and it comes up with this stuff. And right here is where you can do some fanciness. So if we open up game modes, it comes up and it has the main game separate ways and assignment aided. Default checked. So if we look at main game, it's set to auto split, has all the chapters, and then the final split, which is always active. So... Say I wanted to change it and be like uh, Carpenter and do chapters just 2, 3, end, 3, 4, end, 4, 4, end, and then the last one, right? You can literally uncheck these, and it'll only split when it's on those chapters. And you can set it up to where you only have 4 splits. So you can customize it however you want. It's the same for separate ways, and the same for assignment A to... But this is the part that a lot of people don't know is that you can go into options and we also have the load remover, which changes the way that the game's interpreted. And then you also have the save and quit mode, which makes it to where it's a real time timer. And the only thing it takes out or the like what it does is it changes it to where whenever you go to the main menu, it doesn't reset like it would for the normal timer. So it stays in real time, but it knows like when to split and such. So there you go. Um, so if you click that, it will literally turn on the load remover. And I'm going to show you all the different things that the load remover actually does. Um, it tells you right here on this page exactly what it does. So normally on the regular splitter that everyone's default used because that's how we have it set up in the checkboxes. It's not checked default for load removal. We check it to where um, it's just going to be, you know, checking the in-game timer. And, you know, if you pause, it's going to keep going until you unpause and it's going to like come back, you know, um, it's going to split on each chapter, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be just like the game, you know, it's coding is, but we found that game code is pretty bad because there's a lot of things that it should have also taken out but didn't. For example, if I go into the typewriter on accident at the end of a chapter on the 
you know, end of 1-1. One, one, says, do you want to save yes or no? I accidentally hit yes. And I go in. And I'm on that typewriter screen. All of this is counting for time. Every bit of this. And if I sit there for, you know, 30 seconds on that screen and then I'm like, uh, no, nah, I don't need to, I don't need to save. I'll just back out. Well, then those 30 seconds are going to be added to the end of the next chapter that I'm playing. So the game doesn't pause the timer when you're not playing the game, basically, which is strange. So we were like, uh, yeah, let's remove some stuff. So what we did was we made it take out loading screens, obviously. The option slash pause menu, which it already does on the in-game time, but this way you can actually see it pause whenever you press the pause button. Any and all end of chapter screens, so that means anytime you get to the end of a chapter, it stops, and anytime you're on the save, like the typewriter, it's stopped too. It's not counting for time anymore. And then map screens, because let's face it, in a speedrun, nobody uses maps, and there's a couple instances where the map does come up. Um, in separate ways it comes up. Um, in 5.3 it comes up. Uh, I believe in one one it may even come up, um, and those pause, so they're not counted. Because I mean, that's not part of the game. You're not playing it. Uh, the things we are counting are things like, you know, inventories, because that's skill based. That's something you're doing. The merchant, because that's something you're actually doing. You know, with inputs. Um, anytime you're inside the game in general, and any and all cutscenes are also counted. So you want to skip those as fast as possible. Um, the reason we did that is because like. Anyone can skip those, you know, like the map, we physically have to look at the map for at least like a second or two. Like there's no way around it. Like the game does not allow us to skip it like it would a cutscene. We can skip cutscenes instantly. So we were like, yeah, that's like a player thing they can work on. Um, yeah. 5-1, yeah, that's 1-2 where Ashley is, yeah. So anyways, same thing with separate ways. So separate ways, you know, when you're playing, obviously it's going, but what it does is that the... Any loads, any pauses, and anytime you finish a chapter, um, it stops. So as soon as you get to the end of a chapter, until you are Ada once again, the timer is completely paused. So that means all of those end of chapter screens, the little Ada bios, the map, uh, the title screen, the little cutscene, like all this stuff, bef like that takes like 15 seconds before you can even start to play like chapter two, is all cut out because that's just dumb like why would why why count that you know we're not playing the game it's just <laughs> i don't I, yeah, it's stupid and then for assignment a there's not a load like the only thing it actually removes is the loads it's not a like full-on like it doesn't take out the options menu because like this is all rta um it's all in real time so the only thing it's taking out is the load screens themselves just to have um a more fair uh, platform for PC users because because we all know that PC is very very pay to win. Um, if I give Joe over here a computer that's got like Windows Vista on it, and I give this you know guy over here a beast computer with an i9 and like a GTX Titan and all that stuff, it's like well obviously this guy's gonna have faster loads and he's got a clear advantage and he could be the worst player. He could be like trash at the game this guy could be great but this guy's gonna have a worse time than this guy just because of computer and we're like yeah no other console like you know like there's little differences here and there with like ssds and like ps like playstations and stuff like that but there's like not this big of a gap on any other console so we were like yeah we have to remedy this and so this makes it a more fair playing field for anyone just because you may not have the money to buy a computer doesn't mean that you should be underprivileged in being able to get a record or compete. You know, it's like, that's dumb. So check this out. Go download these layouts um, while they're still available for the next year or two because who knows if the site will be up anymore. Um, and, you know, it's uh, it's so simple to use that, like, why why wouldn't we use it? When it just makes it fair, that's all it's doing. So, next thing is the RE4 Central RE4 Tools, which is made all by Whitefinger. This is all him. It shows you really, really cool stuff. It's got everything that like you basically need to know while running the game. Um, you can have it pulled up on your screen, and it'll show you your in-game time. It's actually like using the real in-game time. Um, how much money you have. 
It's got your difficulty, which is really important. This is like the DA, so you can be like, all right, I've taken enough hits, or oh no, I need to take some more hits. This way we 100% know instead of just guessing like, oh, I think I've taken enough hits. Hopefully I don't have archers in the water hall. This will actually tell you, hey, you know, you're going to have archers or you're not going to have archers or this is how many hits you're going to have on the logo and blah, 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 blah. And you can see your DA change as you hit or whatever. It's, it's like such a good tool. And then it's got like a little trainer attached to it. So you can change like, you know, your difficulty. Um, you can, you know, make it to where Leon and actually have full health deal herbs, or you can change the amount of money you have. Etc. Etc. Just for like making uh, inventories easier to create for New Game Plus stuff like that. It's uh it's really nifty. So I would highly suggest downloading that because that's a really cool tool. Um, next we've got some guides. Which um, my goal was to recreate all the um tutorials that we had originally that I had originally made back in like 2015. For the glitches and tricks guide because i didn't like the format of it and i didn't like the way i had presented it in myself um and there's some new glitches and tricks obviously that we needed to add so i wanted to just make it to where each one was a video them by themselves and put it back up and delete the old one however um I didn't want to have to do all of that again and I had asked my team to help me but unfortunately no one did and I don't know that they will um, and I don't know that I'm going to do it throughout these last years of playing this game I may or may not it just depends just to see if I want to get it done or not um, but there's definitely a lot that we need to we need to add but if you do go to the glitches and tricks page it has the old guide and it has a couple of the new ones that we've uh, created on standalone. So you can see those and hopefully we'll be adding more. Yeah. Um, next is um, consoles and regional differences. So if you've ever asked yourself, man, like how come someone can do this on, you know, the Xbox One and you know i can't over here on like the ps2 or like how come this is faster than this or you know whatever just whatever it is you know um this has literally all of it in it <laughs> this tells you all the differences that we've come up with that we know there's i know there's more that we haven't covered and put in here but you know it's uh it's fairly close to being like every single difference that there is um so if you ever have a question on like how come this or does this version do this we've probably got it so check that out next is the usb loader so this is what i'll be exclusively playing for the rest of my career after those few runs are done this is the only console i'll ever touch ever again it is the best version of Resident Evil 4 I've ever played, and I have played every single version except for the PS4 version, so I literally have first-hand experience on every single version except for that one, which is like 11, 12, 13 versions, something like that. So, I <laughs> trust me when I say that this is the best version that you can play. It's GameCube without all the stupid uh you know special two costume no prl no you know like babying you um with the way it was meant to be played with the controller it was meant to be played on but with consistent loads faster inventories it's it's just like the perfect blend of resident evil 4 you know this is it this is the way the game should be played in my 100 percent honest opinion like this is it um, there's no pay to win anymore. Like everything is fair. Like it loads the same every time. It's the loads. It's just it's perfect. It's we call it the Steam Cube because it's basically a GameCube but like Steam. <laughs> it's legit. So this literally tells you everything you need to know on how to do it. It's got you know a video tutorial from this guy doing like a homebrew, so you know how to do the homebrew. And then once you get through there, you know that I have other videos on like you know showing you how to actually make it but it's got step-by-step -step guides and 
I'm telling you, like, if everyone would switch to this version, if we could have a community-wide switch to just one version of the game and just make everything else obsolete, like, this should be the one. This should be the one where the, all the competition happens. So anyways, now we'll look at the actual leaderboards. You know, we've got speedruns, which are single-segment speedruns, segmented speedruns, and then the mercenaries. When you go to it, you have all the different consoles. Um, some of them have subcategories, like GameCube has the three different regions, and uh, PC has PC07, 30fps, 60fps, or save and quit. So um, it's got literally everything you could ever want. Um, you know, it's like, I want to go to, um, Xbox 360 and, you know, I heard that Sunblade used to run this version. So I want to find Sunblade, right? I can come in here and start to type in his name and, oh, there it is. I can just filter whatever I want. Or I'm like, oh, I want to see, you know, any run that's a 128, you know, and you can type it in and be like, all right, here's all the 128s for the category. Or, you know, oh... I want to see something that happened in, like, 2015. And it's like, there you go. And we have, you know, frequently asked questions here. Um, we have the rules for each one. Um, you can submit the run, and it'll go to a Google form, which gets put onto a Google Sheet. And then you can, uh, we come in and we see... Uh, different runs that have been being submitted and we go in and put them our, in ourselves. We make sure they're good. Um, this way everything's like accurate and we know that it's, you know, how it should be. Um, it's got all the different categories. We even have categories that you wouldn't even probably know about. <laughs> we have like glitchless runs, no merchant, one weapon only. Um, and the way that works is by... Uh, you know, you can see Pharaoh here with all the different weapons. He's, you know, here's his Red Nine run, Matilda. Like, he's only using this one weapon. He's got all those. We've got Knife Only, All Treasures, uh, and obviously all the difficulties for every one of them. Um, I think this is, you know, the most complete board of anything um, RE4 related, for sure. Uh, we put a lot of work into this, especially Whitefinger. He did all, you know, most of the work, basically. Uh, we've got mercenaries. You can choose, you know, whatever. We can look at um, Derek Taylor's crazy, legendary Wesker Castle, <laughs> which is insane, you know. And legend has it that still goes on to this date. Not even done yet, so. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's uh, that's all I guess I wanted to say about RE4 Central and the loader mover. Um, I wish the bigger new game pro runners would use the loader mover um, so that more people would see it, but um, they just don't. And if you basically don't play new game, then you don't really matter. So people don't really see it unless you're one of the big names. So it's unfortunate, but how it works. All right. So we went over those two. Next we're going to talk about consoles. So, as I stated earlier, I've played pretty much every single console. So uh, we actually have a dock. Let me think if I can find... It's going to be... Um, Let me find it really quick. We have a dock that has, oh wait, no, it's a uh, Google Sheet. You right. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, let me minimize this so I can see. <laughs> so this is obviously like, you know, just opinionated right here. This is all opinions. Uh, everyone has their different list, but we're literally just going to be looking at mine. So, we'll just kind of bring it down here. And uh, I'll zoom in on it if, I, if it'll let me. Alright, so, <laughs> let me uh, zoom out just a little so that it's got a 
everything on there, hopefully, maybe. All right, there we go. Do I know the way? Bad kids. All right. So, even though I haven't played PS4, I can rank it because I've played X1, and they are literally the same thing except with different controllers, and this one's the PAL version. So, there you go. So, as you can see, I have PC07, which, for anyone that wants to know what PC07 looks like, it looks a little something like this. It was published by Ubisoft, which is, like, the weirdest thing ever, because, I mean, it's a Capcom game. Um, but this is, you know, the PAL version of it. It's called PC07, because it was the PC version that came out in 2007. Um, it's hot garbage <laughs> very hot garbage um it uh crashes all the time it has it's the exact same as the PS2 version except worse um and <laughs> it 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 looks bad the controls are awful and you can't change them um it has a PRL in it but it doesn't work just like the PS2 one. Um and you can never finish a run on it. So I literally gave it a 0. Thank you for the host. Um it uh <laughs> it's just bad, don't play it. The next worst with the 0.5 couldn't even give it a full one is the Xbox One version. There's no case for that. It's a digital download for me. Um, but essentially, it is a updated version of the Xbox 360 version, which the Xbox 360 version... Okay, let's, let's put it like this. So there's three different main versions, or four different main versions of the game. There is the GameCube version. There is the PS2 version, which made changes... There is the Wii version, and then there's the 60 FPS version. So, what that means is, the Wii version was the first HD version of the game, which is what PS3, 360, and the Steam version were all based off of. Uh, they were literal like ports of that, except for without motion controls. If you actually look at the credits of the Steam version, it'll say it's the 360 team. Um, so it's literally a port of the 360 version, which the 360 version was the Wii version, just without motion controls. So, um, <laughs> the Xbox One version is basically a port of that Steam 60 version, which is like the base Wii, you know, turned into 60, where everything changed, all the enemies and glitches are not possible and all this. But then they made it to where the graphics are a little bit updated. Made, it, made them all on HD texture where you can't turn it off. You can't change the frame rate. And then the frame rate is only at 59.94, making it to where some of the other glitches that were possible on 60 aren't, aren't even possible now. So it's like, cool, great, uh, exactly what we wanted, right? So... <laughs> It's um it's only NTSC, which means that it has a higher difficulty than PAL in Japanese. Um, literally, you start out with a higher difficulty, like DA value, than PAL, which makes it to where you have to do more strats for DA lowering, and makes it to where the zombies are way more aggressive, but they're already way more aggressive because they're on 60 FPS. Um, then the controller has dead zones and it's not the actual controller. It's literally the inputs of the game. So you can't control the dead zones, no matter what controller you have. It's basically just the, it's, it's God awful, terrible. They should have never tried to make it. It's, there was a forum post back in the day by Morris that said Xbox one and PS4 will be the best versions that Capcom's ever made. Because it's going to be the Steam version, but with a capped frame rate, and will stay the same for everyone. That was meme of the year, just saying, once we found out. <laughs> PS4 is the exact same scenario, except it's able to have the PAL version 
or the NTSC version, depending on where you live. No matter where you live on Xbox One, you always get NTSC. With PS4, you at least get the chance to have PAL. So, cool, you get a bump. <laughs> Great, thanks. Steam 3060, which is aka Save and Quit. The stupidest idea anyone's ever made, ever. Um, dumbest category. I don't approve. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So those were my bads. Here's my okay. So the PS2 version is just like, eh. It's, uh, you know, got that terrible PRL. The graphics look, uh It's got the slowest loads of any console. Um, it's just not bueno to me. It's just, eh, you know, like, it's not good. Like, if you're going to play an SD version, play the GameCube. It's just, at least it's playable. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. So then, now we have PS3. So the PS3 is the exact same as the 360, except it's terrible. <laughs> uh, and the reason it's terrible is because... Depending on what kind of PS3 you have, you could have extraordinary loads or terrible loads. And it's not like the version of the console. It's not like, oh, well, I have a fat PS3, which is faster than the slim or super slim. It's literally like, oh, I have a slim version and you have a slim version, but yours is 10 times faster than mine. That's cool. <laughs> so there's like no consistency <laughs> with the how the hardware was made or something i don't know it's very strange but you can put it in an ssd which helps it uh but it's not like it's not like tremendous or anything it's just like it makes it more stable it's just weird um and you have to play with a playstation controller which playing a playing with a playstation controller for this game is awful in my opinion you have to use the bumpers um and the way it's just positioned with the analog sticks and stuff, it's not good for just movement and quick turns, all that kind of stuff. It's just not made for the game very well. Uh, next is Steam Steam 60. Uh, Steam 60 um, changed the, what RE4 is. It basically made it into a completely new game, completely different. Um, it's much faster with loads and inventories and things like that, which makes it cool. But the enemies, the changing of strategies, and basically just the overall feel of the game itself made it to where it's literally not an RE4 game to me. It's like a, it's kind of like if they would have made a new RE4, like um, you know, they come out with like you know Final Fantasy 13, and then they make 13 2, or you know something like that. That's what this is. This is RE4 2. <laughs> it's like not RE4 for me. Um, it's it's just not fun to play. I don't know. It, it I just don't like it at all. And it's it's really super pay to win. So if you have a really good PC and, and then someone else has a crappy PC, it's gonna make a big difference. There's people like Sleepwalker and JC who like struggle to play on 60 FPS in general. Like they'll they'll be having it at like 40 FPS and stuff, and it's unplayable they they have a better chance of just playing 30 so they because they can't even play 60 pretty much so yeah it's it's bad um the wii version this is where you start to get into the good console so the wii version um you know has the motion controls but everyone who's ever done a speedrun of it um is always using the gamecube controller which the gamecube controller is you know perfect for the game because that's what it was built for and on they had the GameCube controller in hand while creating this game, so it was mapped to that controller. So that's excellent. Um, it is slow, you know, like compared to some of the other ones that we've got listed up here. Um, but like, you know, gameplay wise, it's great. Uh, graphically, it's pretty good. Um, it looks good. It's smooth, you know, like everyone pretty much has all consistent loads with it. Um, so this is where you're starting to get into the good, you know, region of, of the game uh, the Wii U version just tops it barely because it is the exact same game it's literally the same it's the Wii version it literally says Wii edition when you go in but because it's on better hardware with the the Wii U um, it actually loads faster and it's probably about a minute faster than the Wii version and you can also use the GameCube controller with it as well by using a uh, Wiimote with the adapter 
um, the May Flash adapter and a GameCube controller plugged in, like you would for like Mario Kart, um, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. So it's literally the same except faster, so therefore it gets a bump. Then we get into the GameCube Japanese version. Um, the reason it's an 8 is because it's slower than PAL and it has um, that weird camera angle thing for Ashley, which hurts some runners because it's very hard to control it when you're not used to it. So it's basically a disadvantage, um, but it's still the GameCube version. There's no PRL, there's no um, uh, Special 2, you know, stuff like that. So it's still the good GameCube version, except it's got some things that are a little weird. It's got, a little, it's got some extra text boxes, which make it slower. Things like that. It's just it's it's not as good as the other GameCube version. That's why we put it down here. Um, then we've got Steam 30. Steam 30 is um, the same as the Wii and 360 versions, um, but then again, it's the same issue with Pay to Win. Um, so it's a very good version if it wasn't Pay to Win. Um, it's not as severe as 60. So 60 is very very much Pay to Win, um, but with Steam 30, it's at least, you know, not not nearly as bad, but still does have its quirks. Um, and just being on the PC in general is just like, it's just, RE4 is not, it was not meant to be on a PC, you know? So that's why I put it a little bit lower than the others. Then you have Wii USB in 360. Wii USB is the same thing as GameCube USB, except it's the Wii version. You literally copy your Wii disc to uh, an ISO format and play it from that on the Wii. It reads it natively and uh, makes it to where it's a little bit faster and it's got like you know better loads and such. Um, it's just a more convenient way of playing it. With the Wii U, it's not super convenient because you have to have so many different adapters and things to play uh, with the game controller. With this one, you can just plug and play. Super easy. Your disc never gets scratched. You know, it's beautiful. Um, and that's this. It's uh, the same as a 360 when it comes to the rating um 360 out of all the hd versions of the game is probably the best one has the best loads overall for any console um, when it comes to consistency depending on um what version of the console you have and you know it doesn't really matter it's like going to be the same for everyone pretty much um it's just a really solid solid version of the game um it's it's really really nice to play on. Uh, the 360 controller is good for the game. Um, it's just it's I like it a lot. And anyone that's played on 360 will tell you the same. Um, and then you get to GameCube PAL and GameCube NTSC. Um, the reason these are tied for me is because the GameCube PAL version is the best version of the game, like disc wise, like period. You know, it's it's the GameCube version with the fastest loads. Um, and all the things that were updated to make it better. So, um, you were able to shoot the boulder. There's no more boulder skip. Um, enemy difficulty is lower. Um, it's just like, it's, it's the best version to play disc wise. But then game community SC is kind of like, it's the opposite and where, you know, um, it was the very first version ever made. It was released in North America before it was released in Japan, which is crazy. But it was released here first, and then like a month or two later, it was released in Japan. Then a month or two later, it was re released in PAL, in the European version. So that's why it has the most, like, patched version, I guess, quote-unquote. Um, but the NTSC version has all the exclusive glitches. But it also has things that the other ones don't, such as pause load. So we can actually make it to where the difficulty of the GameCube is lower than PAL to begin with. It gets into like the easy slash amateur type difficulty in terms of how low it goes. It's really crazy. So um, it's just, it's the first version of the game and super exclusive with its stuff. So it's, pr it's pretty cool and that's why I have it so high up. Um, and it doesn't have, like I said, special two PRL, all that stuff. It's the man version of the game. It definitely has the, you know, the highest difficulty. If you don't do pause load, if you're doing like pro new game pro or something, it's terrible. It's the hardest version of the game to play. Then you have GameCube USB, which encompasses J PAL and NTSC. Basically take your disc, put it on a USB, make it into a ISO and play it. And 
consistent loads, super fast. Best way to play the game. Period. So there you go. Um, and I've got some examples here that you can see. I've got, uh, let me change this to the webcam and then you guys can. So here is the GameCube J version. If you've never seen it before, it's in a little box like this. And it's got, this is like a sleeve. So then it's got like this plastic case on it. And the way it's uh, held up is like this. So that's the, the Japanese version of the game. And then I've got the PAL version. This is GameCube PAL. And I actually have two different copies of this one. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to read some of it, but um, this is obviously in English, but I have one that's also in German. Um, the problem with the German version is it doesn't have assignment ADA and you can't get the Chicago typewriter and stuff in it. Um, but uh, I can show you that one. It's literally the same thing, but... It's got a different sticker. This one has the, uh, like, 15 for the age. This one has, like, the Peggy 18+. plus. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Yeah, I haven't been seeing follows and stuff, so sorry, guys. Like, I've just been busy talking. But you can see this one, if it'll focus here in a second, that it is in German. And, you know, if Wipe is here, he can maybe read some of it to us. But, uh... This is the one you don't want to get if you're a U.S. player like me looking get to get the J version. Make sure it doesn't have the 18 on it. Make sure it has the 15 on it. That's the one you want. And yeah, I think there is another one too um, that I've seen. I don't remember what that one looks like. Um, show it again. It may not be German. Um, it looks very German, but that's me, and I don't know German, so, I mean, try and get it to focus again. Maybe. Come on. Here, let me change it to where it's not on, uh, whatchamacallit, autofocus. I'll change it to where it's, there we go. I think maybe oh. <laughs> Can you read that? <laughs> I don't know. Did anyone read that? <laughs> I don't know. But anyways. Don't know what it is, okay. <laughs> It looks very uh, German to me. But anywho. <laughs> I don't know. This is the GameCube NTSC version. This is the first version to ever come out. It came out today in 2005. And, uh, you know, it's just got like the two, two discs like that. And it was made only for... Uh, I don't think the only four is on any of the others. I think it's only on the GameCube and TSC version. Let me show you the discs of the PAL one. I have one of them in my console right now, <laughs> but because uh, I've been like testing stuff. But they're red and black instead of white and black. So then we have the PS2 version. And this is an this is like the limited edition one, and uh, it's got a hard metal tin to it. Um, but this one probably has the coolest case of all of them. But like the game isn't good, <laughs> so. Um, but it's got like a some kind of cell laser cell in it that's like numbered and stuff. Uh, and then it's got the game thank you for the follow it's got a, the game and um the making 
of Resident Evil 4, like a uh, little documentary that I used to have on the RE4 Central YouTube a long time ago. Um, but I had taken that off, so that's pretty cool. Then we have the Wii version, which is the NTSC version of the game. And uh, it's got the game, which is like a dark blue, which is kind of cool. I like I like the disc of this one. And then we've got so James, I've got the Wii PAL version. Yeah, it's got that same uh, same cover that the PC07 and PAL version have for GameCube, but uh. Said it's white, which I thought was kind of cool. And then it's got a a red disc with the cover. I've got some other discs as well. If you want to see those real quick. I've got the NTSC Player's Choice one, which is the actual first one I ever had. This other one, um, without the Player's Choice stuff, was uh, one I actually picked up later, just so I'd have uh, more discs that didn't get scratched because I was playing it so much and stuff. Um, but now that we have USB, I don't have to. We've got... Um, I accidentally picked this one up by accident over here. We've got... <laughs> yeah, it's just Star 4. Um, oh, yeah, I'll show you that one here in a second. I've got um, this preview disc. It's got a playable demo inside of it. Some people have played it. And we were thinking about adding this to the RE4 Central site as like a speedrun, just because it'd be funny. It's literally just the village, but um, I don't have the book for it, but it's at least got the, you know, the game, so... And then there's this one, <laughs> which I just have a GameCube case for, and it is uh, it came with my PAL um, GameCube, and it's got like a what is this thing called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's not a preview disc. It's like something else, but it's um, it's PAL. You can see the word PAL on there. I think it's just got like videos and stuff on it. Yeah, this is Code Madman. Yeah, that's what that this Resident Evil 3.5 right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like I said, I've got the um, the GameCube and the controller at the PAL one, the limited edition one. Um, so this is an official like you know not something I had custom made or anything like that. This is like an official Resident Evil 4 controller. It's silver and black, and it came with the console um, and that disc. Um, and I can show you the console, and then I'll show you probably the best RA4 piece of memorabilia that I have, which Sleep was talking about a second ago. So this is the PAL GameCube, Resident Evil 4 edition, and uh, it actually has the digital out, <laughs> so, you know, it's a version 1, um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty nifty, so, and then the best one. Uh, special edition, and you can see this thing's a little dusty. <laughs> special edition um, GameStop one, which came with, um, if you were to buy this, it would have came with this inside of it. But um, I have some runners' signatures 
on here. Um, and I didn't get to have everyone sign it whenever I was at GDQ. I forgot to get Snow and Rages. Um, I'll never get Rages on here just because he hates me now. Um, but I can get Snows at some point, and I hope to get everyone else's, like, you know, that I can find. That'd be kind of cool. But, um, it also came with a laser cell inside of it, numbered and stuff. And then it came with this, which is like a prologue book. I don't know. It's got some, uh, just kind of talks about, like... Starts with Resident Evil Zero. It keeps talking about that, and then it gets to Resident Evil, the first one. Then it gets to like t two and three, I think. Yeah, there's two. And then uh, you can see Leon is. <laughs> and then it starts to get into yeah. There's Code Veronica. And then it starts to talk about like how RE4 starts. So, yeah. And strategy guide on the back, which I also have. So, but I figured I'd show those just because I was talking about all the different consoles. So you guys could just see what they look like. Because I do own, like, every version except for the PS4 version. Because I don't have a PS4. Um, so, yeah. Um, anything else that we need to talk about? So, all right. Runners. So this is just going to be a fun little topic. Just... So, like, um, some runners that come to mind when I think about Resident Evil 4 or um, people that I think of that have helped shape the game to where it is today. Um, people that, you know, like, either really good runners or glitch finders or community members or whatever just talk about some random ones so we got like you know in the beginning um all the old runners um first and foremost we have dipman the man who made everything possible uh dipman is the guy <laughs> he wasn't the first runner but he sure shaped how we play the game now because without that glitch all the other glitches basically wouldn't have been found um, we have people like Tim Bright, who, you know, may not have been the very first NTSC speedrun, but it was definitely the first, like, sub-two-hour, uh, stuff like that. Um, there's a bunch of other runners. Um, I never found Dipman, no. He, um, you know, he's an enigma. But, you know, we can go back and we can look at... Um, some of these older names, like, you know, we've got Dark Side X, which was in, you know, literally not even a month after the game came out. You know, this is, <laughs> this is super old. Same with this, you know, these two are really old because you got to think, uh, one 11, 2005 is when this game came out. <laughs> so we've got Tim Bright though, who, you know, broke that, that first sub anything mark pretty much like he was he was the man um we have uh you know the englishman he did the run at agdq 2012 uh he is the guy that brought re4 speed running into my world uh without him i would have never started he gave me something to push towards and to try and beat and to learn off of um, never knew it existed until I saw his run. Um, you've got Derek Taylor and Alan Snyder who have been playing the game since 2006 slash 2007, um, who have consistently gotten better and stayed at the top of the runners list for <laughs> over a decade so that's insane to me. Um, Alan Snyder, for anyone that doesn't know, is literally the best segmented player for New Game Plus to ever play this game. He sees this game like a like it's a computer, like mathematical symbols and stuff. He sees it in such a crazy way where 
you know, you think you have a good time and you're like, I don't think any time can be shaved off this chapter. And he'll come in and be like, yeah, no, you can shave about three more seconds off. And you're like, there's no way, man. I don't see how you're seeing that. And he'll come in and he'll just do it. He'll just do it. It's he, He's like, uh, I don't know. He's crazy at this game. He's so good. And then Derek, who was right there beside Alan. And from what Alan's told me, his pretty much his teacher was Derek. He was, you know, in it a little bit before Alan, I guess. And, um... Uh, when it comes to this game, Derek is probably the most uh, like naturally gifted at the game player, and um, he's able to his skill level is at a point where he's able to compete with like top three runners today, and he had that skill level back in two thousand seven. <laughs> So he was putting up runs that were way before, like way ahead of his time, way before anyone else could even fathom, like the times he was getting, he was just putting them up. He was miles ahead of everyone. And when he comes back, he still does that. He'll just be like, oh yeah, I'll just shave off a couple minutes or so. And then he'll leave. He's, he's amazing. He's literally, um, if not the best player to ever play, um, definitely top five. Without question. So. Yeah. But, um. So, let's see. Let's let's talk. Let's go. Let's switch from, like, the old to some of the, some of the new, like, amazing runners. So, we've got people like, um, Yushi, who just shattered, you know, a run that had been up for 10 or 11 months. You know, I, I talked to morris and he said that he thought you know he just got demolished and um he now calls yushi jiren if anyone's a fan of dragon ball super um it's basically the strongest guy in the series of dragon ball (laughs) and uh he's like yeah i I got demolished by yushi and i'm like dude you didn't get demolished you had your record for like 11 months that's not that's not called being demolished it took an entire community of runners 10 or 11 months to beat you, dude. That's not being demolished. If you would have got this time and the next day someone comes in and takes it like that, then yes, you got demolished. But this guy at the moment is, you know, like really good. I've watched his run. Uh, I watched it with Morris on a stream. We talked about it as he played and stuff. And uh, it's really good. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, I still believe that like, when it comes to actually mapping out this game for a new game though, Morris is the guy who he really, um, he really pushed the game to like a whole new level when it came to new game. Um, his strats and his just determination to like, um, keep at it. Like he, he, he basically came up with the philosophy that carp said this the other day. I'm going I'm to steal this carp. He said, um, he wanted to get to a point where, he was so good that RNG didn't matter. He wanted to be able to be so good that he could overcome RNG just by playing too well. Uh, and so, like, his his skill level and his consistency just became, like, legendary. Uh, and it was amazing. Um, Yamati is another one of those that kind of came out of nowhere. And he was starting to put up just stupid times. And nobody knew anything about him, really. And... I actually want to thank him because he's the guy that gave me the Steam Japanese version. He's a good guy. So I I hope he comes back and uh, I'd like to see him and Yushi try to try to fight each other for Japanese dominance. Then you've got Pharaoh, who is basically the 30 FPS king. Like no one's ever going to beat him, <laughs> I don't think, when it comes to uh, 30. Because his from playing so much on 360... Like, he just, he learned basically everything that could happen with this game. I mean, when you play this game in and out every day for years, that that's, uh, that's a, like, extreme dedication. Like, I don't know how the guy does it. It's, uh, it actually is mind-blowing to me, because I can't play this game for very long, especially anymore. Like, maybe back in 2014, 2015, but 
like I I just can't even. I was never a guy who played it every day, and so him playing it every day and getting that good, and then coming onto Steam Thirty and just wiping everyone, just just trashing them, shwasting them. You know, I mean, I knew it was gonna happen, but my gosh, you know. And then he just transfers over to sixty, and he's like, oh yeah, I have a good time here too. Like, what are you gonna do about it? You know, it's just like he's uh he's definitely one of the uh, the best new game players to ever to ever play the game for sure. Um, we've got people like Pitted who, you know, he, he made the original auto splitter for steam version and he had some really epic battles with JTB, you know, him and Ryan were just like passing it back and forth. And it was like really exciting to see them go at it. Cause you know, they were both like friends, but enemies at the same time, uh, when it came to the battlefield and it was just like, it was cool to see, you know? And, uh, but it's got like that. He's just a funny guy. He's, you know, so dry and like, he's funny, but at the same time, he's serious. And, uh, you know, he has like a new game tutorial that's still getting like thousands of views. All, you know, like, just, just, he did a lot for, for the community in both, um, you know, kind of paving the way for new game players with JTB and, um, and also doing those contributions with like the tutorials and the new, and the auto players and stuff like that. So, but, uh, and then, like I said, with you know JTB, he's he's the same thing. He um, he single handedly brought in countless new game players uh, just from one run. You know, the SGDQ run was something that really, for the first time, was what made RE4 a mainstream speed run. And that's why it's in the top like twenty five games played on speedrun.com now. It was because of that run. And so we owe JTB a lot just from exposure and how he you know, how he um he was such a laid back dude who you know, he didn't he didn't care who you were, what you came from, he always accepted whoever and he just played the game had hilarious commentary, you know, he was just a cool guy to hang around with. And, you know, I miss hanging out with him and being able to talk to him, but, uh, it is what it is. But he, uh, he definitely contributed a lot just by, you know, being there and, uh, being that soft spoken kind of adult figure in the background. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, we have like all these new players coming in too for a new game. We've got, you know, Mike, who starts putting up these crazy times, you know, instantly. And he plays on keyboard and mouse, and you're like, how's he doing this? Because the people that had tried keyboard and mouse before this were people like, um, uh, I'm trying to think. There was only, like, a few people that had ever done keyboard and mouse. Um, but, I don't know. It is, <laughs> like, Psycho is the only one I can really think of. I can't think of, I know there's a couple others, but, like, Psycho Ripper... And a few others, and he just comes in and he's like, "Let me show you how to really use keyboard and mouse." And he's gotten really good, and you know, I hope he continues to just keep, you know, going up. I hope his ceiling never, you know, I hope he never reaches that ceiling and just keeps going. And then zombie, zombie, I've only seen like a couple times. I've only cut, you know, caught like a couple streams for maybe five, ten minutes, you know. But seems like a cool dude, and he's putting up really good times already. So watch out for him. Um. And then when you start to look at like New Game Plus, we've got Frenchy, who I just got through training, actually. I've only trained a couple people ever to play this game. And uh, out of all my students, I can safely say that he was my best student <laughs> uh, for the time when he was going through the training. And he just got a 119 flat the other day. Um and his times just keep getting shaved off. So he's going to be coming after my record very soon, which my record's not that good. Uh, you could you could get close to a 16 on Steam 60. You could get a 17.10 for sure. Like, that's definitely a possibility, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, I know for sure a 17-teen number you can get. But um, he's he's coming. He's coming quick. So for anyone that's not seen him on stream, go follow him because he's he's the next big new game plus player for sure. Um Sterling. You got people 
coming to his stream, you know, all the time back in the day. He was the only new Game Plus 60 player when the Steam version dropped. Steam version came out in 2014, and everyone had switched over from 360 and started playing on that, but we were all playing on 30. He was the only one to go play on 60, uh, because everyone else felt that 60 was, you know, too different. And uh, we didn't like it, and we just wanted to play what we knew. We wanted to play the older version of RE4 just faster. But he wanted to go through, and he basically challenged himself to create this category. He he made up all the strats himself. He had no one to compete with, no one to talk to. It was all him. And he made pretty good improvements. Um, Outrage finally came around, and him and Outrage battled for a little bit, but then the pay-to-win came in. And that's when the whole thing started about pay-to-win, where... You know, Outrage could have competed better had he had a better system. But Sterling at the time literally had the best computer in the entire community. Um, at this point, uh, no one else had a good desktop. And so his times and his his uh, loads, inventories, everything, like there was people speculating he was cheating. <laughs> that That's how fast he was. He was so quick at everything because he's a... He's a FPS player. He used to play Halo and he plays, uh, you know, Overwatch and like CSGO and like, you know, all these other FPSs that are like super fast paced. You know, you got to be able to like keep up with it. So when it came to this, it was kind of second nature to him. He was like, oh, look, a fast version. Like it's dependent on how fast I go in my inventory and how fast I move and blah, blah, blah. So he was just like going super fast. And because his computer was so lightning speed, there were literally people were like, nah, he has to be cheating. But it was just because he was that good and he had a computer that, that was that fast. But he made super good strides and like being able to you know, like without anyone to converse with, like that's impressive. That's really, really impressive to me. So hats off to that guy for basically inventing what is New Game Plus sixty to this day. Um We've you know, like all these there's there's too many players to go over. Um but, you know, you've got people like Sleepwalker, who's um, the head of the community pretty much now. He's, you know, he's the new, the ringleader. He's, you know, keeping it held down. Like, um, he's done a great job since the purge. Like, he's always been a person that, um, you know, like anyone can go talk to. He's always been a big communicator. Uh, that's what I love about him. He's uh, he's just a solid dude, you know, and uh Nothing, nothing he's ever done that's like super bad in the community or wrong. So like he's a perfect fit. So you know he was uh, he was the lone PlayStation Two New Game Plus player back in the day um, until he found us, and then he moved on to you know Steam and all that. But like he uh, he was in kind of the same scenario as uh, as Sterling. He was like the only one doing. PS2. He had no one to talk to, no one to get strats off of nothing. He basically just had to do it himself. And, you know, because none of us were playing PS2 at the time, we couldn't even help him. Like we were playing other things and we were like, I, I don't even know what you're doing, man. Like, <laughs> you know, and you know, especially on new game, like no one knew what new games are like what to do. So he's basically like the, he was the, the older version of like lewis now who's the only person playing on ps2 you know he's just he's crazy and speaking of lewis lewis is the craziest person i probably know when it comes to this game that guy has put up so many ridiculous times that i didn't even think were possible for playstation it's kind of amazing like how ridiculous it is he's like he's got every record for ps2 i'm pretty sure he's like <laughs> he's got all of it man he's um and he just keeps improving he just doesn't stop like i don't i don't get it i don't get how good like he really actually is and when he comes to gamecube dude he's gonna be big time competition like nobody knows how good this guy is besides our little group that talked to him. He's in, he's ridiculous. And he is the best moderator of anything I've ever seen ever. Um, I will go in and, and go to my little uh, sheet to see new runs to put on the site. And I'll be like, okay, I'll put in like, you know, 
this these one or two that are submitted. I go put them in, and I'll notice that Lewis has put in like ten the same day, and has found five new runners out in the world that are in like places I've never even known were places. Like the other day, he was like, "Hey, we need a Guatemalan flag because I found a guy in Guatemala who's playing." I'm like, "Where are you finding these people?" Like he his research and his dedication to the game is ridiculous. He st- he goes to like every Twitch stream for RE4. He watches every single player, gathers every single strat, and applies them to the PS2. He's got so much knowledge of the game. It's it's scary. <laughs> so, if you don't follow Lewis, go watch that guy, because he's, he's really good. You got people like Storm, who's killing it on New Game for GameCube. You know, him and that in the French community. The French community of the game is the strongest community out of any community for this game. They they are they communicate well. They have this like understanding of the game, especially new game, that's on a different level. Uh the only like people that can really compete with them are probably other Europeans and Japanese players. <laughs> like there's like not really any US players that are like on the same level as the European and Japanese communities really and truly like we're we're just far behind and I it's bad like uh they're so good <laughs> I don't get it they're just too good man but um uh, we got people like White Finger who was super good at New Game Plus for PlayStation 3 and you know, pretty much anything he plays, he's amazing at. He, um, you know, we would race on, like, GameCube, and he'd beat me um, in relays and stuff. I mean, he's he's a really solid player, but he just kind of, like, lost the drive for the game, and it sucks. He's, like, in the same scenario as me, so, you know, he just quit playing, and so no one really got to know how good he actually was, but he's really, really good at this game. And when it comes to just being, like, a cool, nice guy, he's... He's so <laughs> such a good person, you know. He created this website. Like he just he's just he's just a cool dude. Then we've got people let's see, we've got Snow. Snow is a guy who started before I started. He has been in the Resident Evil community for a long time. He is the GOAT when it comes to Resident Evil 5. Like no one can dispute that. He is the best RE5 player. On the planet, he surpassed Bronin in a trance and all them. Like I promise you, like he's he's so good at the game, and he just keeps playing it. And I don't know how. And then when it comes to RE4, he's like one of the best separate ways players, period. And he was super good at New Game Plus as well. Like he didn't even like dedicate that much time to New Game Plus, and he was putting up, you know, top three times just out just for fun. He's uh, he's the most naturally gifted. Video game, just video game, period, player that I know, like, as a friend. He is, any game that he picks up, he's going to be good at, and he'll be better than you. <laughs> like, he, he's that competitive and that talented that he'll do it. And then we have people like JC and Carp, who I pretty much talk to on a daily basis, where, you know, JC is just like this... uh <laughs> laid back guy who was playing GameCube, you know, just kind of was going with the flow and, you know, he's like, he's just so like laxed and he's like the adult in our group. Um, and, uh, you know, he, uh, he was just playing GameCube. We finally, you know, met up with him and he came up with the JC skip and he started like <laughs> getting pretty good at the game. And now he, the only thing holding him back is his PC. Uh, he's trying to go beat Maxi. And uh, if he just had a better PC, he'd be he'd be up there. He'd be good. And like he's made such big strides over the years, but like no one's really noticed. You know, he's just kind of this background dude who just kind of does his thing, you know. And no one really talks about him, but he's just like ever so slightly just creeping up on people, like, <laughs> and he's just like doing it in this way where no one's noticing, but he's just gonna be up there one day. And you're like, wait a minute, when did JC get good? What did this say? What? What now? Like, he has this time? When did this happen? (laughs) And then you have Carp, who, you know, like all the other people I've trained, like Choco, who was 
you know, Choco was a cool dude, then he just got frustrated with the, the game and quit. With Frenchie, um, you know, Extreme Lampshade. We'll get to him in a second. But, you know, Carp is one of those guys that, you know, he came to me. He saw, he had seen a stream of mine or video of mine. I think he saw one of my tutorials. He came to me, he asked me for help. I helped him. And then from there, we just became friends. And now he's, like, a valuable person in my life, not just from speedrunning, but, like, in general. And, uh, you know, I can't, I don't know what I would do without my, my speedrunning buddies. They're just, you know, Snow, JC, Carp, like, everyone that I talk to. And, uh... Now Carp is the new king of 360 when it comes to New Game Plus. He is back whenever I first started and then moved to 360. It was me and Sunblade, and that was it. There was like no one else that was really like capable of putting up the times we could. And now Carp has a time that's like extraordinarily good and would take me a while to beat. So he's come from you know, just an average run of the mill type player to one of the best new game plus players to ever play the game. So I'm really proud of what he's done. Um, an extreme lampshade, Ricky, he's, uh, he is, uh, probably the smartest guy when it comes to this game. He, um, he's really just a, you know, brilliant guy in general. He's science and math and, you know, all the stuff he does, coding, and he's uh, very, very analytical. So whenever he comes up with strats, they may say frames, but, like, he's come up with so many over the years. We call him XLS strats for Extreme Lampshade strats, and he's just, uh, he's so particular in just everything he does. And, you know, we were playing Code Madman the other day, like the Resident Evil 3.5 demo thing, and he was like, uh, let's see if we can find a faster strat here. We're like, nah, dude, like we can't do anything. And then he finds out that you can shoot a zombie through a wall and just changes the game completely. And we're like, what Ricky, come on. Like, why do you always have to find strats? Like, <laughs> you know, like, dang it. But he's another one of those guys that kind of lost, um, lost the fire to play the game just because he was too busy, uh, school mainly and work and stuff. But, um, he was putting up really good GameCube times, and then he kind of just, he just uh, didn't have time, which is unfortunate because I really wish like he would have kept playing while we were all playing, so that he could have improved as we were improving. But you know, it is what it is, and he could always come back. But by the time he comes back, I'll probably be gone. So, um, Sunblade, Sunblade was a big inspiration for me. Um. You know, I had seen the Englishman's run, and then pretty soon after, I saw Sunblade's run at SGDQ 2013, and I remember putting in a donation right when he was running, and they did read it, and um, and I was like, good luck, and here's to the 135, and he said, you know, 135 is not possible, and like, I took that to heart. And I ended up going and getting a 135 before minecart skip happened. So I actually did do it. Um, and it was just because he said that, that I wanted to do it. But he was he was my goal, like, forever. Um, I blew past um, the Englishman, and then I was like, man, you know, like, this Sunblade guy is, like, the best ever in the world. He was top on Twitch, like, you know, partnered and all this other stuff. And he would get, like, thousands of views. And I was like, man, like... You know, that guy's super good at the game. Like, he's going to be, like, impossible to beat, you know. And I remember being able to do two different races with him, and uh, one with Soda Yoda and one with Karska. And I ended up getting third on both of those. And after that day, the second time I lost, it changed me. <laughs> I went in and uh, I did a uh, New Game Plus segmented run on 360. And uh, I was like, I'm going to go beat his time. Like, no matter what. And I did. And everyone was shocked by it, I remember. And then I came back, and I started putting up stupid times. And that's when the real race began for Supremacy. Me and him had some really crazy fun back and forth. And now he's, you know, retired from the game. Uh, but, man, like, Sunblade was my biggest goal and my biggest drive back in the day. So, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty good. But yeah, um, 
that's pretty much it, I guess. There's too many people to talk about. And if I missed anyone, you know, I'm sorry. It's just like <clears throat> my voice is kind of killing me now. But there's so many others that weren't named that, you know, just want to th- say thanks to all of them. And, you know, um, even though it's just a game and at the end of the day, this really doesn't matter. You know, it's just a portion of our life. Um, it did make an impact for me. You know, I mean, it, it changed how things were done in my life and, it's made me a different person, so gone through bad, gone through good. Um But yeah. So for the rest of the month I hope to just, you know, play the game the best I can. Put up some good times for everyone to see. I've never been a good entertainer. I'm not like a people person. Um never have been. Probably never will be. Um you know, I don't like it's it's hard for me to invite people into my life and like just to put a webcam on and stuff. Um but you know, hopefully through just me running the game, I hope like I've given you something to watch and entertain with, even though I may not be one of those quote unquote entertainment streamers who like interacts with chat and all that other stuff. I just I'm just a guy that likes to play games fast. That's it, you know? And I just try to be as competitive as I can, and that's all. So, hopefully, um, through the years, I've at least given you something, you know, whether through it's a tutorial or just a video or, of, like, me playing or something. So, but, yeah, guys, I guess that's it. Um, I guess I'll go, you know, find something, someone to host. But... Hope you all have a good rest of your evening, and uh, now you know. Go play a lot of RE4. Uh, you don't know how long this will last. You don't know how long you'll be on this earth. So just treat people the way you want to be treated. Do what you love, and uh, that's it. So, but yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll catch everyone later. So God bless and have a good one.